Chat GPT gave me a script. It was it was incredible. It just do do It just in, in seconds. It gave me a 10 minute script. It even says opening shot: a picturesque landscape photo hanging on the wall. Host enters frame, facing the camera with a friendly smile. That was creepy. That wasn't uh, whatever. A few weeks ago, I made a video on what not to sell for stock photography, and I say you best pictures. You should keep them, and then maybe you could sell them as prints. And I have sold a few, so now I feel qualified to bring you this video. How to sell prints as a beginner. I also asked ChatGPT to give me a script on to how to sell prints. And to be honest, it missed all of the points that I was going to mention in this video. So this video might be a little bit longer than normal. I'm going to put the timestamp so you can click or skip if you're not interested in any particular part. Before I get to the next step, let me tell you my idea, my vision when I thought I was going to be selling prints. I always thought I would have my printer and I would hand sign every print, I would wrap it, I would do all the work, mail it myself because it's something I'm creating, it's something I'm proud of. You know, actions have consequences. A few years ago when I started stock photography, I wanted to simplify my life, hit the road, explore the country, and just live off photography and it's been great. That action that I took had consequences. Some of those consequences have been incredible. But at the same time, I also have some that are not that great. I'm a little bit limited in space. I don't have uh, storage. I can't have a printer. And that's what this video is gonna be. How do we go from here to here? So now let's go back to ChatGPT and I'm just gonna list the points and the steps that it wanted me to take to sell prints. First, find a platform, something like Etsy or Fine Art America. Number two, upload your photos and be very careful to have the right titles, descriptions, and keywords so people can find you. Number three, pricing your prints. Number four, marketing. And then number five, packaging and shipping. So it sounds like a very specific and very well thought out list. The problem is it's missing the most important part. <laughs> now I've sold pictures in two or three different styles. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna share the first one with you. Ah. All right, so the first way that I've sold photos, that is in like tourist destinations, tourist locations. Some of them have been in postcards. I know this doesn't seem like much. You sell them for a dollar or two dollars. They only cost a few cents to make. But if you have a local store, a small store where you live, something, every place has tourism, has a specific type of tourism. You could always sell postcards for a few dollars. You can buy them in a box of a thousand or so and then you can start making a little bit of money to get to where you want to be. Another thing is to sell small like this. These are aluminum prints. They're a little bit smaller, so I can sell them a little bit cheaper. And again, they're very touristy. So this one is Circles in the Sand over at the Oregon coast. Another Oregon coast. Another beautiful sunset. So these are all coastal. So I have a store at the coast that I work with and they take my pictures and sell them. They take a commission. And then every few months I go and get my uh, the income from that. I also have prints like these. So these are posters. These are 12 by 18. Let me see if I can hold them here. Uh, so they're a little bit bigger. And again, they're very specific to the coast. These are like an impulse buy. These are posters that I get in bundles like this. They're 25 at a, at a, at a time. And I'm going to be putting links to printers and who I trust and why here in a minute. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Now these photos, uh, because I buy them in bundles, I can sell them for a lot less money. It's archival paper, archival inks. The quality is it's great. They're beautiful photos. But because I can buy them in bulk, I can sell, sell them for a lot less money. Being, meaning that a tourist walks into a store and they see a beautiful picture that reminds them of a, a landmark at that specific place and they'll buy it. And I've had good success with things like this. Now, because I travel in my motorhome, I have developed a, a friendship with a lot of these businesses, a lot of these RV parks, and they all have a store. It's a little bit easier for me to just go and put these photos at these stores and then sell them. And then every few months I go back and replace what's sold and you know, just kind of manage it that way. These prints I wrap in this photography envelopes. So, you know, they, they preserve the print. Uh, and it looks a little bit more professional. They, they won't get damaged by moisture or things like that. So these I sell for about $20. You sell a lot more quantity when the price is less, but you're also paying a lot less for the bulk uh, pricing. That is one way that I sell prints. It's selling tourist uh, merchandise, tourist uh, memories and things like that. Some of the most popular spots 
but there's always printing. We need to print. I don't have a printer, so I outsource that. Now, I've, I've used quite a few different printers in the past, and I keep going back to the same. So I'm gonna be putting a link down here in the description. That's for Mpix, Mpix Pro, Miller Labs. They're the same family that runs these businesses. They are professionals and they do an amazing job. I highly recommend them. They're not the cheapest out there, but their quality is the best I've found. Uh, I've tried printing through other companies and I'm always disappointed. But going back to Mpix or Miller Labs, I'm always impressed. All right guys, now when it comes to pricing your prints, this is something that's very important. How do you price your prints? Most people will tell you, and most retail stores will tell you they always double the price of what it costs to make that product. So when we're talking photography, it's a little bit difficult because for example, this picture that I'm, I'm offering for sale right now at $400 for this mounted print ready to hang. If I was to double the price, let's do the math here real quick. It took a team of eight, two hours to draw the labyrinth. Uh, it took me eight hour drive each way. Uh, and then two hours to make the photo, an overnight stay. Uh, and now we can throw in lunch or dinner, whatever, if we want to add that, that's part of the cost of making the photo. And then having it printed, if I'm selling it at $400, I'm losing money. <laughs> now, yes, I could sell it a hundred times and then that'll start to make sense. Now, am I going to be able to sell it a hundred times? I don't know. I'm not the best when it comes to pricing because my background is in stock photography. And that hurts me because, you know, I'm used to selling photos for a quarter or 50 cents or stuff like that. So that's not the best way to market yourself. When you're trying to price something, this photo is unique. Nobody else is ever gonna get it. So I'm pricing it at $400 because of the size and where it's at and how it's mounted. Uh, I'm hoping that because it's unique, I'm gonna be able to sell quite a few prints. Uh, I don't know this. I've sold a couple already uh, with the same theme. So I just don't know how these are gonna move and what's gonna happen. This is a risk we all take. When it comes to pricing, there's a story I wanted to share with you. And this is a photographer that I know and respect. Uh, he told a story, I think it was a newsletter, how he used to sell photos for whatever it was, 100, 150 bucks, his prints. He has a printer so signed and he would ship them. Now he started selling a lot of prints this way, but it was taking all his time. This is not easy, printing them, signing them, checking them, doing all this work. Uh, so at one point he raised his price, uh, $300, $400. Now that cut his sales, his number of sales about half. So he's still making more than he was before doing half the amount of the work. And this is something you have to consider. Don't sell yourself short, but also don't create so much work that you're gonna hate it. You need time to go out and take more pictures to, to create more. And if you're selling it just to get number and volumes, then you're not gonna have the time to go do other things. So it's very difficult to price yourself at the right place. And when we're starting, I know it's, it's scary, but just try to at least double what you spent making that photo. All right, so now let me go back to the other side of printing, which is uh, fine art, a gallery, selling high-end prints. Uh, and this is a little bit more difficult. The investment is much larger than selling tourist uh, items. So for this, you need a network. You need to know people. It's very difficult to just put up prints for sale on Etsy and then just wait for sell to sell them. That rarely happens. I've only sold two pictures that way with Fine Art America. So when we're selling prints, high-end prints, we need to find a network. We need to find people that are working in this. And I was very lucky that because of the connections I have uh, throughout the country, I was able to meet, let's call her an art dealer. So this is someone that wants to help artists in Oregon. And she's putting pictures in different galleries, different locations and moving them uh, and doing pretty much all the work for me. Now she does take a commission, which I got to take into account when it comes to pricing. But if she wasn't doing this for me, I probably wouldn't sell any photos. This is not something that I would do. This, I don't have the connections. I don't know where to display the art. So by having a gallery, uh, somebody else that does this for you, you're almost guaranteed that you're gonna sell pictures. Now, this is not guaranteed, but this is one more step and something's gonna help you. It's have connections, meet the right people, and then they're gonna help you become better at your craft and at selling photographs. 
All right, so now that's two ways to sell photos, to sell prints. One is in tourist destinations, souvenirs, and the other one is through a gallery or an art dealer. There's another way, and that's using a calendar like this one. So I'm the photographer for this calendar. You do have to have a network. You have to have a following to be able to sell calendars like that. The other way that I know that works is selling photo books. Now I know this works because I bought these. These are not mine. I bought these. This is from a, a British photographer, Nigel Danson. I don't know if you can see the books. Uh, beautiful photographs. This one is from Tom Heathen. Another great photographer. I learned a lot from these guys, which is why I bought the book. I eventually want to do one myself, but I just don't know how or when because I'm still here and I need to get here. Now, Tom Heathen also sells prints like this. Now, I bought these. I don't have where to put them, but I bought them because I wanted to support his, his work. They're very beautiful, clean images. These are, you know, they're, they're, they're gorgeous, but he sold them as a package. These are five prints and he sold them in one package. Now these, you have to send package and send yourself. You can order through a lab and hold them in your house. And then when you do the marketing, you can sell them. All this has been building up to how to sell these photos. Now you know where to print them, uh, how to print them and display them and different options that we have for marketing. But what is the most important thing that we need to do when we're selling the photo? And this is something that chat GPT completely missed. Uh, and that is the human element, your networks, your connection. We're not just selling the photo, we're selling the story. If you look at every major photographer out there that's selling prints, they always have a story about how they captured that image. And this is what people are gonna connect with. They're gonna connect with you, they're gonna connect with that story, and that's what's gonna make them the final decision to purchase that print. One of the best ways to share your story and your, the stories behind the photos is to start a YouTube channel. Now, this is not for everybody, this is a lot of work. Uh, I didn't realize how involved it was when I started, but this is a great marketing tool. You don't have to do a YouTube channel. And if, if you don't want to do this, every time you go and take a photograph, take your cell phone out and do a little bit of behind the scenes. This is something I just learned or heard from Tom Heathen as well. When you go out, do a little behind the scenes of what's happening. This is going to help your audience connect with you. When you post your photo on Facebook, post a behind the scenes video so people can see what you're doing, what was involved in getting that photograph. This is what's going to get people to connect with you. Uh, when you do, if you post them on Instagram, do a, a little carousel with different videos and what happened to be able to get that photo. Write a description, get in the habit of telling the story behind each photograph. And this is going to help you get more interest and more traction. Uh, and that's probably one of the better marketing tips I can give you. The reason I bought this, it's the same reason I bought these. It's because I'm trying to support the artists to help them in their journey. And if you look at these photographs, they all have a story as to how that photo was captured. That means the image has a, a meaning and it has a purpose. Just like I bought this, people are going to buy it to support you and to support your career as a photographer because they connect with you. Now I do want to share a marketing tip with you guys. This is something I learned from Nigel. When you're trying to promote a print or a specific product, use Facebook ads, target a population like this, this picture of a labyrinth I have here. I'm going to market it to the area where the photo was taken. There's a lot of rentals, Airbnbs, uh, new homes being built. A lot of people might want this unique photo. So use Facebook uh, ads, target the specific locations, and see if you can generate any sales. I tried with the previous photo and it didn't work, but I think I know why. I was trying to go through Zenfolio, my website, and it is way too complicated. If you have a printed product, a final product, and you can just uh, put it in the mail and send it, I'm pretty sure this is gonna work for you because people are gonna connect with a unique image from a unique area. Facebook is a great tool if you could use it the right way. Uh, th there's a lot of tools out there for marketing and to do all this. When I started in photography, I did not realize that I was going to have to learn how to sell myself, how to be a publicist, a marketing and a business person. <laughs> but these are all things that we have to do in order to be able to continue to do photography. In all honesty, guys, I think ChatGPT did a great job. It gave me bullet points. It gave me good advice. Uh, it, it was just missing experience and the human element. 
And to me, that's the most important thing when it comes to selling and marketing. Uh, it, the video would have been a lot shorter, but I think you guys would have been fine with it. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I think that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Step one, according to ChatGPT, choosing the right platform. Okay, that's, yeah, that's it. That helps. Welcome back to the channel. If you're a budding photographer, hmm. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Charles Waller. It's Waller Photography. Today I'm gonna, no, I hate putting everything out front like that.